Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Imperator Rome as we are playing as the Roman Republic. All right, so uh, to start out this episode, there's quite a few things we need to take care of. If you recall last episode, we had that lecture over the Etruscans and then we also defeated the Etruscans, completely annexed them. So we have control of all their territory now. I do assume we'll be getting a bunch of trade offers for some of the goods that we have here. You know, the ones that we set up to allow trade here. I'm sure we'll get a bunch of requests for that. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, start with annexing, or starting the integration, I should say, of one of our one of our subjects, which is these guys right here. We'll take care of control of those two provinces. The last subject we'll have after them is right here. Uh, unfortunately, we're still trying to get the opinion up to 190, so we can't quite integrate them yet. And that'll be the last of our subjects that we have to to integrate. Now we do have a character that we need to ransom, which is not that character, that's obviously the leader here. Uh, the character is this guy right here. Uh, I don't know how he got under the control of them, our subject, I'm not entirely sure what happened there, uh, but we cannot uh, send them a ransom offer until after, uh, you know, I think it's like 30 days here since we did just send them an offer to, you know, for the integrate. Uh, so we won't be able to do it just yet. One reason why you'd want to ransom your prisoners back, get them, uh, you know, get them out of the hands of, of foreign powers, is because it does reduce your overall stability. You can see that we're getting negative 0.02 because of prisoners in foreign lands. So we do want to, to ransom them back. Um, an, another thing I want to mention here is a lot of people are very concerned about uh, this being up here, uh, why I'm not taking these missions. I thought I mentioned this a, a couple times. Uh, maybe people just really don't like that tab being up there. Uh, people keep saying I need to just take this mission. I, well, I don't want to take the mission, so I'm not going to. Uh, you know, I don't see why we would take it just to get rid of that. If we really wanted to, I could dismiss it. Uh, I could just you know dismiss that. Um, but yeah, I, it doesn't bother me being up there. So I, I don't want to take this mission. I don't want to do the destroyed Italian allies, That's we, we could just integrate them. It's just easier to do it that way. There's only two of them. Uh, so I don't want to take that. And then I also don't want to approach the Greeks. So I'm not going to not gonna do those missions, guys, uh, just to get rid of this here. It doesn't bother me, but apparently it's bothering a lot of people uh, it being up there. But that's the reason why we're not doing those missions, uh, because I don't want to. Those, those effects aren't good. Uh, they're not good effects. Uh, so we don't want to do those two missions, guys. Uh, the other thing we need to do is to go ahead and change up our laws. Uh, we're going to change over to Punic Reforms, uh, which, as far as the modifiers go, we're losing the monthly war exhaustion uh, reduction and, and getting a national power, uh, national manpower increase. And you'll see our levy size multiplier is being reduced by 5%, so overall our army is going to be much smaller. However, this will allow us to get the Legion. So let's go ahead and do that now. Pass the Punic Reforms. And with that, we can now get our first legion. Now this will only allow a legion in the capital. Uh, we cannot get a legion anywhere else until we get that one uh, tech uh, we talked about in previous episodes before we're able to raise them in other areas. So we can only raise them in the capital. Now, I've had some people still express confusion over exactly how the, the numbers work here. Like where are we getting these numbers from? Uh, why in certain areas we're not getting more, uh, more troops from there? Uh, you know, where it's just, uh, we've been sitting at four units, uh, for instance, down here in Magna Grigia. We've been sitting at four units for a long time. Uh, we did have five briefly, and, and uh, that's the reason why we only have four now is because the levy size multiplier was just reduced by 5%. And and so some people wondering why it's, it's four and it's not increasing. Uh, some people are wondering just where that number comes from. So essentially the way that this works is that the only pops that you can recruit from are one pops that are integrated. Uh, so in our case, the only integrated culture we have is Roman. Uh, to see your integrated cultures, you just select that right there and you can see that the Romans are the only integrated culture we have. Another way to look at it is uh, sort this by civic right. Uh, in order to be considered an integrated culture, uh, they have to have either citizen or noble uh, civic rights, which means they can, you know, promote all the way up to that level of pop. Let's say we wanted to, you know, sort this by our, our total number of pops here. And uh, the Etruscans obviously uh, are very populous. We have quite a few Etruscans now because we did conquer all that territory. I mean, there's almost as many Etruscans as there are Romans. 
And so let's just say we wanted to, you know, integrate them, then we'd have to change them over to citizen or noble right, and that would increase their total happiness. You may be wondering why not, why not do that? Well, the more integrated uh, cultures you have, the lower the overall happiness for all integrated cultures are, because uh, you're giving more and more rights to people, so they, you know, feel like their rights are being taken from them in a way. And so it would have result in the Romans, who are the most populous in our country, becoming less happy. Uh, so there's a, a penalty to doing so. I'd prefer to just integrate them all. That's what I'm going to try and do is, is get them integrated. Uh, so that's what we're going to focus on doing. And so thus far, so, so because of that, we're not going to increase their, their civic right here. Now we, we could do that, um, you know, and, and integrate them and, and make them a bit happier, maybe give them more decisions, which maybe we might want to do that to increase their integration speed. We're already doing the right of intermarriage, which has given us a plus 15% there. Uh, we could do more uh, to try and integrate them even more. Uh, we're not going to do that right now, uh, but it's something to consider in the future. Uh, so that's our only integrated culture right now. So those are that's the only culture that we are able to recruit levies from. Uh, so it will only consider the Romans. And then on top of that, the second thing that it considers is that it will recruit from any pop but slaves. So slaves, you cannot recruit pops from. They don't give you any, any levies. Uh, so basically all pops that aren't slaves, that are of an integrated culture, that is the number it uses for the levy size multiplier. So if you have uh, this levy size multiplier of a 12.5% and you have 100 pops that fit in the, that category, you know, they're integrated and not slaves, then you'll have 12 units, which I don't know if it rounds up or rounds down, so maybe you'll get 13. I wanna say it might round up and then we get 13 units. I could be wrong. Maybe it rounds down, you only get 12. But you'll get like 12 to 13 units out of those 100 pops. And so we're getting 27 pops here when all that math is done. Uh, that's how it's, it's working here. Now, you may be wondering how it works here with the, the four uh, units that we get from Magna Grecia, considering the fact that we, at one point, didn't have any Roman citizens over here that we could recruit from, yet we were still able to recruit four units. That's because that's the bare minimum. It doesn't matter if you have any pops that fit uh, those requirements, you'll always be able to recruit, uh, recruit four units from that area. Uh, just You can see here, for example, in the area we just conquered, we have four units uh, that we're able to, to recruit from. Uh, so that's the way it works. You always have the base of four uh, that you can get from there, which is a total of 2,000 men here. So with the legions, uh, the way it works with uh, how many units you can get, it's based off of that region's you know, total number of levies. Uh, so you can never get higher than that. I think it's slightly under it. Yeah, it's 25 here it is the most that we would be able to get in our legion uh, for this region. If we had a legion here, uh, then the most we'd be able to get, uh, I think is a little under four. Uh, so we wouldn't be able to get large legions in these areas anyways, even if we had the, the appropriate law and tech to, to do that. Uh, so yeah, we'll be able to get 25 total units here and that does take from the levies. So for every unit we build in our legion, we'll get less levies. So you may be wondering what's what's the benefit of legions if you know it, getting that law reduces your levy size multiplier, which reduces the total number of units you'll have, just reduces your, your the size of your total army. Uh, and you know, you can't build units here and then have the levy on top of it. You know, every unit you build here is gonna take from the total levy numbers. So what's the benefits of having legions? Well, some of it will tell you here what the benefit is, but I'll show you guys as well. So let's go ahead and, and build our first new legion, which is gonna be called uh, Legio Italia. Now we could change this legion name to something else. Uh, I don't know what we'd change it to. We could call them, I guess, like Legio One with a Roman numeral one uh, for, for our first legion or like, uh, Primio or Primo, I don't know if it might be Primo uh, Lego or something, or First Primary Legion or whatever, I don't know, we could come with all kinds of names. I'm just gonna leave it at this one though, I, I'm, I'm absolutely fine with that. Uh, so these are the four potential leaders here and we're actually going to dismiss them all and I'll tell you guys why here in a minute. We're gonna dismiss them all and then this the first one, that is the Legate, so the main leader of the Legion, however, Regardless of who the legate is and who the tribunes are, which are the, the lower level leaders, any one of them can be selected to lead an actual, uh, you know, an actual army on the map from that legion. Uh, you don't have to have the legate in power. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and pick somebody here that we want to be in charge of the legion to be the legate. And we're probably going to base this solely off of marshals. So that's the first advantage 
uh, of a legion. Uh, you know, when you have the levies, it's you know, led by the governor. And with the governor, yeah, maybe you're considering Marshall because uh, you know he's going to lead your troops. But another thing you have to consider is how good of a uh, of an actual governor he'll be. Uh, with the Legion, you only need to consider you know their marshal and their and their loyalty and and all that good stuff. Any traits they have, you don't have to to consider whether they're a good uh, uh, a good governor. Uh, plus, like in the capital, your ruler all automatically becomes a leader, which your ruler might be incredibly cruddy at leading troops. Uh, so that's one of the benefits of legions. And we have a lot of choices here. Uh, we have one from a family who we could select who's level 10 here. Uh, we also have another level 10 marshal, and then we have our best one, which is Gaius, at level 12. Uh, as far as loyalty goes, he also has the lowest of the loyalty, and he's very popular, meaning that he'd probably become a problem for us. Yeah, I do assume if we pick him, he'll be a problem. But he is 66 years old. It looks like we have a broken tooltip here. It says to do. Maybe it just hasn't been done yet. That's, that sounds like what the issue is. They need to, to uh, you know, come up with some localization there. He's really old, though. So if any uh, you know, cohorts become loyal to him, then it wouldn't be as a big of a problem because he's probably not going to live that long. One thing I really like about him here is he got this aggressive uh, trait here, which that's part of why re the reason why his marshal's at 12. That's increasing it by one. Uh, the other advantage is that uh, this one here won't help as much, but with the light cav, our discipline will be plus 5%, so that's that's helpful. Uh, so, yeah, we could do the uh, uh, Gaius here and get that aggressive, and he's overall just the best commander. This guy's really, really young. Uh, he's at least a little bit loyal, but I think we're going to put Gaius in charge. Uh, I, he could end up being a problem again because of the uh, the loyalty and the popularity, but, yeah, whatever. We'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, later on. So let's go ahead and we're not going to actually give him any units here. We could go ahead and give him a unit, but you don't have to. Uh, you could just create the legion with no units in it. And so we have the event for our first legion. It is a large step for a nation to show it has the resources to keep a standing army. As we have formed the Lego Italia, we now stand as a nation above others. Our glorious nation enters a new era of professional soldiers that will show no mercy to our enemies. Uh, that was a a lot of use of the word nation there. Nation, nation, nation. Uh, additionally, they'll be able to forge a legacy of their own, and bravery or lack thereof shall determine its character. Uh, so, with this being our first legion, they got a unit modifier here that's going to increase army morale recovery and reduce the chance that cohorts will become loyal to the commanders. So, a pretty useful uh, modifier there for the first legion here in our capital. Uh, and then the other modifier, and this is the one that all legions get. And this is one of the things that makes legions inherently better than a levy, just as far as pound for pound with each unit, is their morale is slightly higher, their movement speed is slightly faster, and they also have better discipline. A uh, Discipline is how many casualties they cause, how much damage they do. Uh, so they're going to do a bit more damage. And so that's just one of the things that makes legions, the units in a legion, better than the levies is they get that little bonus there. It's not significant, but it does make a difference. Uh, so let's go ahead and actually get some units here because you'll notice that they're not on the map anywhere and uh, they, don't, they don't have any units. Uh, so we need to go ahead and add a few. And I don't know how much we're going to be able to pay for. Probably don't want to get too crazy with this initially. Let's go ahead and add some heavy infantry since we're Rome. In fact, we might want to go, I don't know, how much we can afford to get honestly but probably gonna go a little bit overboard it's fine <laughs> let's go and get some heavy infantry we're gonna get some heavy cab because i think we have some bonuses for heavy cab and uh we don't have any uh heavy cab for our uh for our levies and then we're also going to get some engineers and the engineers are helpful in many different ways uh one of the things they help you with is sieges they can help out in sieges quite a bit uh, another thing they help when it comes to, like attacking across rivers uh, but yeah they're also better for the road building uh, which we'll talk about that in a little bit so yeah we're gonna go and get a uh, one cohort of engineers it's gonna cost us 3500 of our manpower and 140 of our gold and you can see our maintenance here is kind of high so it's gonna confirm the changes and they will pop up on the map immediately 3500 soldiers there right away and let's go ahead and make sure we're not paying them right now. Yeah, we actually are paying them, which maybe we do want to pay them. Uh, let's just see how we're doing on the balance. The balance is all right. If we reduced it, you can see we get... Actually, the balance is not all right. Yeah, we're in the negative here. All right, so we're not going to pay them for right now. Uh, one reason to pay them, though, is so that you can drill them. So we get this military experience from the 
experience of the units that we have on the map here. So these guys will start with 5% experience, so they're going to get us a little bit of military experience every month. Now, if we were to drill them, then we could increase that military experience to increase what we get every month so that we can buy more traditions. Uh, to drill them, we do have to have the pay at full, and this increases the Legion maintenance ca uh, cost by plus 33%. And so overall, we probably can't afford to do it just yet uh, because this is probably a bit more trips than we can afford for right now. We will get a bunch of money, I think, from uh, trade offers here in a minute, though. So we'll, we'll take a look at it again soon. Uh, but that's one way to increase the, the military experience. Now, I'll wait till we start playing here to talk about it. But there's another kind of gaming tactic you can use a little bit later in the game to, to really boost your military experience by a ridiculous amount. Uh, so the one thing I want to mention here is the building of roads. Uh, so this does not require a, a legion to do. We don't have to use the legion to do it. The, uh, I'm pretty sure the uh, levies can use can do it as well. I've never done it with levies, but I, I assume you can do it with levies too. Uh, but we won't be able to do it until our civic advances gets to level four. And that makes me think about a map mode here that maybe we'll check out here a little bit later in the video. I do want to get this started because I've been talking for a while now. Uh, yeah, we can't build roads yet. Somebody asked me about it. We gotta wait till civic advances gets a little bit higher. I think we're almost there actually. Uh, so let's gonna close that. I'll uh, let it play. I wanna go one month. Oh yes, and the reason why I did not. Yeah, we are getting some trade offers here. The reason why I did not add more tribunes is because I'm worried about our total family. Uh, you know, the jobs they require to be content. I, I believe. And I could be wrong here, um, but I believe if we get one more, uh, one more job, that's it. Just one more after what we just got with that Legion job. I believe if we get one more, then it goes up to three. And then we'll need uh, three. And if we gave like two more, then you know, then that, that would definitely uh, put us at needing three for each of these. And so we'd essentially, we'd create three Tribunes and they would all have to come from these families. And they're not necessarily, you know, the best martial choices. And what do we get from that? We already have them all content. Uh, so, you know, getting them up to back up to content, uh, there's no real benefit to that, at least for right now. Now, I would like to get tribunes eventually, uh, but as long as we have so many offices that are in the hands of minor characters, I don't think this would be wise. Because, uh, yeah, if you see our best commanders here, yeah, most of them are not from families. Uh, so, yeah, we won't, we won't do that right now, guys. Maybe a little bit later we'll do it. I'm just worried about having to... Uh, have three positions for every every family being a, uh, a problem. All right, well, I don't really want to trade with either of these guys, so we're just going to decline both of them. I'm sure somebody else will want to trade with us. We just got to wait a little bit. I'm sure we'll send, we'll get more offers uh, here. And I think it's been about a month. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and contact them about ransoming that prisoner off so we're not losing the little negative... Uh, 0 0.02 stability there. It's gonna be 12 gold, so not too expensive. All right, so we got some more offers. I'm gonna trade with these guys, I suppose, for that wine. Just trying to increase that money a bit. All right, let's see who else wants wine. I guess that's a lot of what we got was wine. Oh, I don't know who that was. We'll just trade with these guys here. I think we got some more goods that are available for trading. Uh, it's just if people need them or not. I suppose we'll see. Uh, so this is over dies. Yeah, that was one of the things we have available. Um, you know, I kind of want to trade with Thrace. Let's trade with them. Try and help them out. As they are the weakest of the Diadochi. Just slightly the weakest now. Because Macedon has become so weak. Alright, so more trade offers here. Let's go and take a peek at possibilities. Yeah, I would trade with them, sure. And we got one more here. And he is wanting wine. I'm gonna trade with him. Okay, this is really gonna step up our income. Carthage is wanting furs. We're gonna tell them no, because I'm not trading with Carthage. Hopefully somebody else will want the furs. And they do. All right, so these guys do, and I'm perfectly fine with trading with them. Don't get a whole lot of money from those furs, but it helps. And this is for honey. We get a lot of money from honey. Yeah, why not? Yeah, we'll trade with them. And so our monthly income is now stepped up quite a bit. So we could probably pay for our military now and thus drill them. Let's just see how much it goes up by. Uh, yeah, we can pay for them. Uh, so let's go ahead and drill them. It's gonna go up even more though, remember, because the drill does cost money. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start drilling them. 
and they'll start getting some monthly experience here and that'll result in uh, getting more monthly experience here as well. Uh, now, the alternative way of uh, earning experience that I was talking about, the kind of gamey way, uh, and one thing you'll notice is that those units that we, we built here have been taken out of the total levies. The other way to do this is, is once you get in the mid game, once you have enough modifiers that are increasing the starting experience of cohorts. Uh, so like, I don't know the exact number you might want to get to, but you can get it really high. You know, you can have it like 50% or even higher. And so what you want to do then is you raise up your units and you have to keep them raised for a certain amount of time in order to get experience for disbanding them. And I don't remember how long it is. I want to say it's six months. I could be wrong on that, uh, but I think it's six months. And so that you raise them up, they start out with experience because you have the modifiers that do that and they'll lose some of that experience, uh, you know, before you can disband them. But they'll still have a lot of it by the time you do disband them. So you disband them, and then you get a big chunk of military experience for doing absolutely nothing but paying for them. Now, of course, you do have the penalties for raising them up. Uh, if you raise them up over here, you'll get, and you continue to do it, you'll you'll affect the uh, the loyalty there. So obviously not good. Uh, but you don't get loyalty hits here in your capital. So you can keep raising them up over and over and over again in your capital, but no real penalty besides losing you know whatever those pops were earning. You know the manpower. Uh, the the research points and the uh, the taxes. Uh, so that's really all all you're losing there. We do have a little event here we need to act uh, interact with. So you're just going to lose those bonuses, and of course you got to pay for the military as you have them raised up. So it costs money. Uh, there are penalties to it. That's not free, uh, but it's worth the military experience, in my opinion. Uh, but it's very very gamey. You just raise them up. Uh, you disband them. You get the military experience. You wait the four months before you can raise them up again. Raise them up wait six months, disband them. Uh, so basically it's like every 10 months you're you're doing this and getting a big chunk of military experience. And as you get in the late game, when you disband those those levies, you can get a huge chunk of military experience. It's very, very gamey. Uh, and uh, it's clearly not balanced right. Uh, it does not work. Uh, that you should not be able to do that. Uh, and, and the reason why you want to do it in the mid game, of course, is because you know, here we just don't start with enough experience. Right now we're starting with 5%, so that'll be way down by the time we're ready to disband them. So it just wouldn't work. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's clearly not working, probably. Uh, this character here became shrewd. All right, that's our console. And so that's going to give us those benefits there. He's going to lose a little bit of his zeal, but he's going to gain some finesse. Going to have more Senate influence. He's going to earn more money from his holdings. And mercenaries will be cheaper on the maintenance. So this tribal chief is offering its friendship. All right, so where is he? Let's just take a look at him. Oh, okay, so that's the one we're hopefully gonna be annexing soon. So we might be able to get their opinion up high enough to annex him now, it looks like. Uh, yes, let's do that. And then we'll go ahead and, and start the, the integration. All right, so we'll integrate them as well. All right, so that worked out nicely. Uh, so we're currently integrating both of these. It's gonna take a lot longer to get them integrated because they have more pops. Uh, so it's going to take a bit longer. Uh, but yeah, we'll get them both integrated and then we won't have any more subjects. Now, as far as how many slots we have for diplomatic rations, we actually have two and neither one of those subjects are taking up those slots. So we could get an alliance if we wanted to or offer uh, subject status to some of these countries. I don't think any of them are willing to accept, though. Uh, I've looked at them before and yeah, they're just not willing. Yeah, you can see they're pretty far here away from accepting a client status, negative 148. So yeah, they are not going to accept that. So we've seen this event many, many times already. This is just this character demanding a, a, a space somewhere. And I mean, he's not bad. Uh, he would work for a finesse position, I suppose. This Publius character. He is going to lose loyalty uh, immediately, of course. He's gonna lose that 15 loyalty, but he's gonna keep losing loyalty if we don't give him a position. Uh, as far as what position we can give him, we can take a look and see if there's anything uh, that we might wanna do for him. He is part of a family, so it's like we you know we do get the, uh, the benefits from, from granting him something. So we could like take a slot away from the Claudii family or something. Uh, we could also just, you know, let him lead a fleet just to make him happy. Uh, but let's just see if there's any positions that we might want to give him. I suppose this would be the, the best position for him, but that would be taking it from uh, the Cornelii family, which, of course, would irritate them. So we don't want to do that. Uh, I think his zeal was better than this guy's, if I'm not mistaken. Let's just go and scroll through here. Yeah, he has better zeal. So, yeah, if we just wanted to appease them, although that would take him from the Decii family, and I think they have just the uh, 
number that they need, so that would piss them off too. All right, I mean, we could do that, but again, um, we'd need to find another position for this, this character here. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and put him in place here, because technically he's is better. So we're gonna put him in place there, and then we'll have to, you know, we have a scorn family, so we're gonna have to get somebody from that Desii family, which this guy's slightly worse. Uh, the statesmanship makes him a lot worse, but uh, yeah, that'll appease that guy, and it keeps the families happy. Uh, we don't have any, I keep clicking on the wrong button here. Uh, we don't have any issues here now. All right, so yeah, that's what we'll have to do, uh, unfortunately. All right, so let's just let it play here. And we continue integrating and just burning off the aggressive expansion, increasing the manpower, all that good stuff, and getting these troops trained up. Uh, this will help them out in the conflict. You know, they'll have the higher experience. I feel like the ex the experience decay is just way too rapid. Now, you can't reduce that a lot. I just feel like the base is way too high. That experience does not last very long. Uh, it's just like people just forget how to be a soldier, apparently, and in a short amount of time. All right, so this character did die in Publius. He was one of our researchers. Uh, researchers. Uh, so we will need to get somebody else appointed there. And we're going to want the best choice here, even if that's not necessarily going to help appease this family. We'll have to, to figure that out some other way because I really feel like when it comes to researchers, we should have the, the best choice. And we'll probably just pick this guy here. Yeah, we'll go with him as he's older. And now we need to find somebody from the Cornelia family to uh, get a position for them. Uh, so just take a look if there's anybody uh, that we can appoint here. Obviously, nobody into those positions. And I think the only family that has got one extra position yep, is the Gladii. So we'll have to replace one of them, I suppose. Now, I don't know that we have any. I'll just kind of take a peek in here. No, not really. Not anybody that's that's much better here. Uh, there is some minor characters, so we could improve the martial advances. And this guy is not even... Yeah, he's a minor character himself, so there's really no reason not to put one of these two characters in charge here. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We'll put this guy in charge just so we have better research right there. And yeah, there's nobody in these positions other than minor characters. And we don't want to replace those family members. Uh, so let me just see here what we can do. Uh, this guy is pretty decent, but that's not really uh, a bonus that we actually need. Uh, but I, I, don't, I don't really want to piss off Appius here. We might have to, though. Let me just see here. Um, yeah, <laughs> we'd have to get a huge reduction. Yeah, that'd be quite unfortunate. Uh, so it's a big reduction here. But I think that's what we're going to have to do, uh, since they are appeased right now. And there's, yeah, there's really nothing else to be done. So let's go and put Publius in charge here, even if this is going to drastically re reduce that that bonus we're getting. I think it's going to be necessary. Uh, we do have one disloyal character. Uh, characters are considered disloyal once they drop below 50. Now, I don't know when it pops up here. I want to say it's once it drops below 40 is when it pops up here. But they are considered disloyal once it goes below 50. However, they're not considered like a serious problem, which is why this is blue instead of red, until they go below 33%. Now, once they drop below 33%, then they become like dangerously loyal. And like though, if they're, for instance, if they're a commander, they'll like refuse your orders and just start moving the unit around doing whatever they want with it. Uh, so as long as it's not below 33%, it's not too big of an issue. Uh, this guy does seem like it's getting lower and lower for this current character. So Publius is settling into his new role. This is the guy who's probably going to be quite happy about us giving him a position, and so now he's giving us money. So that's one of the benefits of, of appeasing people who are griping at you, is they, they do give you uh, a favorable event there. In this case, we got some money. Uh, we can actually go and spend that money. Although I'm not sure we're going to spend it on just yet. Uh, I feel like we're, we're currently probably not earning enough money to warrant getting more troops into the Legion just yet. Uh, it's already pretty expensive as it is. You know what, we could reduce our, our forts even further. We're paying a lot for forts, guys. And there's actually a couple locations where we don't need to pay uh, that much. So we'll take a look at that here in a minute. Uh, we have an event regarding the Popularis, Popularis's agenda, uh, which I always want to go down here for some reason. So their agenda was uh, was something we looked at in one of the previous episodes. They want to take five holdings from the head of, of families, which we decided we weren't going to do because that would 
re- result in, in uh, a bigger loyalty hit uh, than what we'd be gaining from, from taking those and appeasing that. Let's see if the event's a little bit better here. We'll just take a look at the facts. You guys can read that if you if you want. So we can say we have always suspected Quintus of, of abusing his influence. Uh, so he's the head of family of the Fabius, uh, the Fabii family. He's also our co-consul. And so we can re- revoke five of his holdings, and we will be drastically reducing his loyalty, but we'll get a lot more uh, approval from the Popularis faction. I think they're pretty high on approval. But remember, if we don't do it, then we, we drop by 50, and that would drastically reduce the overall stability of our realm because this is the faction that has almost all the power, two-thirds of the power. Uh, things have changed a lot when it comes to our, our government, guys. So yeah, that's definitely a problem. Uh, I don't think we can go with that route. I think we feel like we have to go with this route, even if it does piss off Quintus a bit. It is what it is. Can't be avoided. Oh yes, money. Uh, I didn't want to start spending this here. Uh, so I don't know if we have any, we do. We have uh, another building slot. I always like filling up the building slots in my capital first, and then I do uh, the other provinces, particularly the settlements here in the capital region. That's kind of my logic on, on building here. Uh, so let's go and get something constructed. And I almost want to do another library um, so that we can get more of the research points. This is kind of our research capital here. So that would be helpful. Uh, other options is more manpower. That's always helpful. Another tax increase. I don't know how much uh, we're actually getting on taxes here and if that would be worth it. Uh, we do have one tax office. Yeah, it seems like it's, it might not pay for itself anytime soon. Uh, I think it would take a long time to pay for itself, but it's an option. No, we're actually over the population capacity, so it makes sense to get another aqueduct. Uh, so that's what we'll build. So we're getting some penalties from that. Being over just a little bit. Uh, we do still have a bit of money, uh, so you know what? Let's go ahead and build in a settlement, and I still do have to deal uh, with the issues on the, the forts, because I think we're, we're having some problems there. That's costing us a lot of money. So we've already built in this one. This was when we built the mine. Uh, over here, we'll be able to get a mine, of course, because we got horses. Uh, so let's take a look and see what other options are. Uh, so of course we can get the, the barracks. So that would increase the Freeman happiness and desired ratio and uh, give us a lot more manpower here. Get that tribal settlement, which we don't want to do. Or you do the slave estate or we do the provincial legation. So really it's it's these two that we're gonna want to do, one of these two here. Either the slave estate, local monthly food modifier, local slave output, uh, result in some more money essentially. So money or manpower is uh, what we're looking at here. Let's go ahead and go with the, um, you know, I think, let me just take a look at where we're at on the uh, the freemen. All right, yeah, because this one will increase, increase the total freemen here. This one does not affect the actual uh, population numbers. So I think for this one, we will go with the barracks. You can always use more manpower. And we could use more money too, I suppose. And I keep forgetting about the fort. So let's go and take care of this. Uh, so when we look at our Tanto screen here, you can see our fort infrastructure. We are over this. Now you notice we only have two forts here. So I might have explained this earlier in the, the series, but if I did, then bear with me. I'll explain it again, uh, just for people who, who didn't catch that. Uh, each one of these uh, cost three. The first one you build uh, in the province costs three. So that we have two level one forts here. So that puts us at six. And then because this one's a level two fort, you add one more and that's how you get to seven, guys. Uh, so that's why it's so damn high. So as far as which one we want to delete, I think we're gonna get rid of the level two, even though we don't necessarily have to get rid of the, the level two, because I'd prefer to have the fort here. Uh, so then that'll get us down to three once we do that. Uh, so let's go to get rid of that. And now you'll see we're at three out of five for the infrastructure there. So a lot of area that doesn't have any fortifications, that's fine. Uh, another area I think where we're getting a penalty is here. So we'd have to do something about that. Now, I want to say that this is the one, yeah. So maybe we want to move like the capital over to here. This one does have a port though, so it is helpful having the port there as well. You know, I think we might keep it there. Uh, yeah, it's fine. I know we're one over there. We'll eventually want to get rid of that because it is costing us extra money, but for right now it's okay. Uh, we got rid of one of the penalties, so that'll result in us getting a lot more money, guys. Yeah, big, big jump there. Uh, so that is helpful. And we could now increase the size of our legion as well. And so, 
Yeah, I don't see any reason not to do that. Let's go and get some more troops, guys. So just taking a look at what we currently got. So essentially to be able to counter everybody, I think the only thing we're going to need is uh, archers. So we're probably going to get some archers. The heavy cav, they will, you know, you see their counters there. Uh, they're going to counter those archers. Everything is good against the, the light infantry for the most part, so we don't have to worry about countering those. Uh, so yeah, these guys are going to, to counter any archers we run into. Also, we can counter chariots, uh, but I think most units do that too. Uh, the heavy infantry are the ones that are going to counter any heavy cab that we run into. Uh, I, I think these guys also will be countering the light cab for us. Yeah, so the heavy cab will do the light cab as well. Heavy infantry will counter any heavy cab that we run into, and they also do decent with the, the light infantry, as you can see here. Not quite as good as the heavy cab. And then as far as um, countering heavy infantry, there's nothing that we have that does that. Uh, heavy cab is not good at that. Heavy infantry, obviously, you know, can, can fight heavy infantry uh, without any modifiers. But if we wanted something that countered it, we'd want to add some archers. We don't need the light cab. Uh, light cab or uh, heavy cab does everything better, with the exception of uh, uh, horse archers. So if you're facing a lot of horse archers, which we won't be anytime soon, uh, then light cab can help with that. But uh, other than that... I find the heavy cap to be the better option. Uh, so let's go and add a couple archers, guys. I'll just add two of these here. That'll increase maintenance by 0.30, and we'll get up to 4,000. Let's get more heavy infantry, guys. Yeah. So let's go and get two more of these. There we go. Excellent. We spent all our money. Spent some of that manpower as well. And overall, the legions are now going to be more expensive, but we can still pay for it. Uh, so it's not a problem. Uh, we got our oratory advances done. Excellent. So that's going to increase the country civilization level. And we can now pick ourselves. Uh, we can make use of another innovation here to get ourselves another advancement. And we're going to go ahead and stay, I think, in line here. Uh, and just go and kind of spread them out and, and, and spend them in our in their respective areas. Because, again, they're all pretty good. Certain ones are obviously better. Oratory is a fantastic. Uh, got some fantastic bonuses, as does the martial one. So we could like uh, just focus on those two areas, but I'm gonna spread them out a little bit and do them all. I think that's uh, gonna be the best way for us to do it. Now we were going down this route here and we will eventually wanna keep going down uh, that route. But for right now, I'm gonna go and start working down on these ones. Uh, so what we're really trying to get down here, I mean, there's some great stuff. Got some research, uh, you know, some research goodies here. Those are nice. Uh, some very good stuff down here as well at the bottom. And so we're going to work towards getting that. There's also this one here. This allows us to become a dictatorship, so that's important too. And all of those can be got to from the centralized committees. Uh, so we want to go that route. Uh, with this one right here, the official orators, uh, that will only lead us down to these ones. Uh, I don't... Hmm, you know, we might be able to get... We can get down to here but we cannot get down to these ones here. So yeah, this is the, the best one for us to get right now, even if that bonus is not that helpful. Uh, change governor policy costs, it's, it helps, because we do change our governor policies up, but obviously uh, probably not one of the best options there, but we do need to go down that route. So that's what we'll get for right now, as we kind of plan and look towards the future. Uh, so one thing I did not uh, address yet is also, did we just get, or we got oratory, we didn't get the civic advances, so yeah, we can't build the, the road just yet um, until we get that, that civic advances up to level four. Um, but one thing I have not shown yet, and it's I have moved these all around, so I have to, to find them here, the Atlas map mode. This is a, a fantastic map mode, very beautiful. I like the way it looks, it shows the roads on here, that's why I mentioned roads. Uh, so it shows all the roads that you currently have. So you can see the roads stretching across Asia Minor and into into the Middle East here and Persia. So yeah, they have the uh, the roads on there. You can also see the cities and, and how large their star is, is is based on how you know populous it is. And as you zoom in, you'll see more cities pop up. You can see your temples. So we see the Temple of Diana there. So yeah, really really cool. Uh, it's a cool map mode. Somebody wanted me to show it. I don't think it's one that you'd really play on, uh, but it's, it's cool for screenshots. I really like it. Uh, but I haven't talked about map modes at all in this campaign, and I probably should have talked about this in one of the, the first episodes, how you set this up, because it doesn't actually look like this. Somebody asked me about it, like why I have more map modes. Uh, so you, you select on the, the, the configure preset map modes, and then you can just drag them and put them where you want them. 
and you can even drag you know you can even change all these up here and they have hotkeys for them so yeah maybe you want them in different areas uh, ones that you use more so i've changed them up uh just based on how i use them uh, so you know I, I i don't use the political map mode really so i don't know why i kept that one in there but I typically use diplomacy map mode, particularly in wars. We haven't really been using it in this campaign. Um, obviously, culture map mode is helpful, as is the religion one. Trade goods is great for seeing what goods are there. And I think this one should probably move further over here because I use the fort one so often. But yeah, you can control the map mode situation down here. Set it up however you prefer. Uh, and I haven't really shown that. Um, yeah, you just drag it. Drag it where you want them. So, pretty cool little feature there. Very helpful. Now, EU4 has a similar system here for setting up your own map modes, but they have a lot more map mode choices. There are quite a few of them. Uh, we did get the Civic Advances, and that is level four. Uh, so that does mean that we can build roads now. Uh, so let's go ahead and get our Civic Advance. Now, here we are moving down this route because I really want to get down to embracing philosophy eventually with the maximum research efficiency. Super helpful there. Uh, also getting the more research points, period. Uh, I just find getting stuff to get more research so you can get more stuff. It just kind of feeds into itself very well. So we eventually want to go down that route, and that's what we kind of been moving towards. However, as I said before, these two here are very important. Uh, you get to make a choice there. So I think we're going to go ahead and start moving towards that as well. We'll kind of bounce back and forth here. It might be better to race down one, um, you know, just, just so you can get those bonuses. But when we flip back and forth, then we are kind of getting some of the, the good stuff that are on each side here. This one is very specialized on slaves here initially. We can get this one, National Slave Output, plus 3%. That'd be helpful. We're going to get more uh, money from them, more taxes. Uh, this is going to be really great. Slaves needed for surplus. Uh, I mean, it's it, it helps. It just results in more, uh, more trade goods overall. A feast for Lucius. So the residents of Heraclea are holding a celebration in honor of their much-loved governor, Lucius, renowned for his beneficent, beneficence, tolerance, and common sense. It is nice to see our approved candidate validated in such a way. So you say, on with the celebrations. This is all pretty good overall. Yeah, nothing bad here besides, of course, Lucius becoming more popular. And then we can say he does not deserve such jubilation, in which case we'll gain some money and overall he's not going to be very happy. And I think that's us becoming jealous. We'll get the jealous trait. So yeah, we'll do this. You notice that we keep having these events about prominence. And when you look at the character screen, you don't see prominence on here anymore. Uh, as a monarchy, prominence is right here. However, because statesmanship is so important for a republic, they moved statesmanship right here where prominence typically is. And this is only the case with republics. It doesn't make any sense because you have a statesmanship right here. Uh, and I know the, the point here is so that you can see it when you, you hover over it. So we can see and kind of always have issues trying to get this to stay open. Ah, yeah. All right, we're over there. So they want you to be able to see statesmanship here. I understand that, that makes sense. But where the hell are you supposed to see prominence uh, as, a as a republic? It's just uh, really, really strange. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, why they uh, why they did that, why they have two entries of it. Uh, we do have a new trade goods slot here. All right, excellent, so we can go ahead and port something else. Uh, I don't think there's anything that we're particularly working on right now. So we're just gonna see what's available. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and trade for glass. Uh, this is gonna increase the happiness of our citizens, which is completely unnecessary because it's already 100%. Uh, but what we're trying to get is the country civilization level bonus here. Uh, that will uh, increase the, once we get two of them, of course, then increase the civilization level in all of our provinces by 5% or the, the max possibility, which civilization level is like super important. Look at all those great things we get from it. Uh, and we can't actually trade for two. Um, although that one we're about to get on our own here once we annex them. So let's go and trade for this one here and then we can just do a trade with ourselves. All right, excellent. So that's gonna give us, again, citizen happiness that we don't need. And we're just really waiting on getting the next uh, import route so that we can we can trade for a second one and, and get that nice bonus there and get that civilization level up the coming of the city of okay so we finish up the city here all right so we knew about that and they're now producing cloth okay so uh, we now have that we got a little bit of storm over here but yeah we have that city constructed they'll start getting all the bonuses for being a city and so we're gonna play a little bit longer here guys a few more minutes 
And I, I think I actually built the Legion up a little bit larger than I planned on it. I think I'm trying to get up to 5,000. We got them up to 5,500, but that's fine too, I suppose. Uh, we could always get some more, get another one, because we do have the money uh, for doing that. Uh, we did get another Marshall Advance done. Excellent. So let's go ahead and get a tech selected there. And we already know which route we're going down. Of course, we do have to go all the way down here to get that one. And these do have, like, fantastic bonuses, guys. Uh, the starting experience, again, that's pretty helpful. The heavy infantry discipline is what I really want there. Experience decay would be super nice. Yeah, more discipline. These are all great. So it's not like we're just racing to get cohorts, considering the fact that getting the additional legions really wouldn't be all that helpful because they wouldn't be very large, uh, nor could we even pay for them. Uh, so that's not really why we're going down to get this. We're getting all the other good stuff. There's a lot of great stuff here, guys. Uh, and getting this one here will allow us to go down this route as well. Some good stuff here. Um, doing this one. This one's a, a very nice one. Successful city sieges by your legions will now generate 0 0.1 military experience. So that's nice. Also, you're just getting the discipline and, and a lower chance of cohorts becoming loyal to their commanders. Very great stuff there, guys. Uh, so yeah, let's go and go get this one. Uh, we're also going to get a character with an exceptionally high marshal being promoted from the ranks. That's a nice benefit there, too. All right, awesome. So we'll have, like, uh, we could always look to see if it's somebody we want to appoint here, because I, I think he's going to be the... Oops, we need to do it this way. I think he's going to be the same level. Oh, no, no. He is ridiculously high. Look at that. All right, so I think he should probably be in charge here. So what we want to do is just replace this commander here, though that is actually not an option right now. All right, so we'd have to wait. Yeah, we can't replace him because we'd have to have a Tribune in here. And again, I think if I get another Tribune, yeah, I, I think if I get a Tribune here, guys, then it will result in our families wanting three positions, and that's going to cause all kinds of problems. So I'd prefer not to do that just yet, uh, but not having any Tribunes ever, yeah, that's... Not something we're going to be able to, to do for, for the entire game. We eventually are going to have to deal with the the families wanting more positions. It's just the nature of things. Uh, we could you know, put some of them here in some ships, I suppose, if need be. All right, so uh, we did integrate uh, this country here, resulting in us having their families. And so we need to... And, and we did that much quicker than we did these guys, uh, even though we started that later just because they had uh, less pops overall and were just quicker to, to integrate. Uh, so let's go and just take a look and see if any of these... I mean, we have so many minor characters right now. I mean, this guy's got a decent zeal. Uh, I guess we could have looked at it this way as well. Yeah, I almost want to say just like, let's, let's just get our popularity of our, our guy up because we have so many minor characters. And yeah, so all these guys did die. We have so many minor characters, you know, we can't even make use of them all. Uh, we'll go ahead and do it with these guys. Get a little income bonus there, a little boost. And more wine offer here, so we're going to accept that. We can trade for our wine. All right, so everybody integrated, except for these guys here, which we're working on right now. Could have turned this up to speed 5. I thought I was on speed 5 for some reason. I wouldn't, no wonder that thing was going so damn slow. All right, so we did that for the entire game. That is my bad. Uh, we did get the final... One of our advances here uh, for the level four. All right, so let's go ahead and and uh, get something selected here. Uh, the route we're we're going, to, you know, you're all going down the same to the same location here, essentially, uh, since there's only one tree and it only goes one place. Uh, so it's really about what you're wanting here. And I think what we're going to want to do is go down here, down this route. There's great stuff here, guys. Absolutely, uh, but I think I'd prefer this route here. And my reason here is this one focuses so much on like food. There's a lot of food ones here, and food is just not typically an issue in this game. Uh, so yeah, I don't want to go down that route. Uh, just there's too much food stuff. While there's a lot of good stuff, there's also you know the national population growth. I think is some of the the best stuff. I think there's two of them. Yeah, the national population growth would be super helpful. A little bit more happiness in there as well. But yeah, the the food. With so many different food bonuses. I don't know. There just seems to be better stuff over here, honestly. Uh, so with this one uh, here, we have to pick two routes to get down to state burial uh, burials, which I really like. Uh, this one's going to give us a free province investment. That'd be helpful. Um, 
and also gives some other benefits that are helpful as well. So really we're just choosing between this route here or this route here. So this one is increasing province loyalty and increasing national slave happiness, which is pretty hard to increase because uh, yeah, they're, they're gonna have it pretty low no matter what. Or we can get more ruler popularity, which I just don't find as useful in a republic where your ruler is constantly changing or and the uh, monthly war exhaustion reduction, which typically isn't too much of an issue. Let's go with this route, guys. We're gonna go down here. Province loyalty, always helpful. I think right now all of our provinces are currently loyal, but as we expand, I think we'll see more, more issues with that. Uh, veterans do. After wars, toil, and hardship, it is with hopeful eyes that the veterans of our armies look towards retirement, a life of rural farming with promised farmland often parceled out to the most deserving. Recent circumstances have led to great droves of our retiring soldiers clamoring for that for this quiet life, seeking counsel from their generals and leaders. So Servius has been appointed on behalf of our generals to negotiate a complex arrangement. We should be very wary of what might occur should we refuse. So we can say commanders like bribes, don't they? So then we'll bribe Gaius and increase his loyalty. Uh, but overall, we're going to get a, a negative penalty for, for 47 months, reduction of morale of armies, and of course we have to pay for that bribe as well. Or we say we don't need their support, in which case Gaius would uh, lose loyalty and we'd still get the penalty and would lose a bit of stability. I think we're going to have to do this one, guys. And we now have a deficit, of course. We're now in the negative. Uh, as far as the road, bu road building... We want to like stop drilling them. Hmm. Well, that civic advances was oh, it's got to be greater than four. Oops, I thought it was four. My bad, guys. It's got to be greater than four. So we are not able to do the road building yet. Yeah, we'd have to wait till that gets to five. All right, so no road building for us just yet. Uh, it gives us time to to get this military experience up. We haven't gotten very many traditions so far in the campaign yet, so yeah, that's beneficial. You can see we're getting a lot more than we were before. We are getting like 0.30 something per month. Now we're already getting 0.58, and that's with these units only at 43% experience, so we're gonna get a lot of uh, military experience here. But we are paying for it. It's costing money keeping those, those troops drilling. So we have integrated them. We could take a look at their leaders and see if any of them are ones we might want to bring in. But again, I think the problem here is uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to bring any of these guys in. We have so many minor uh, characters. Too many minor characters. As it is. We have a trade offer here. This is for our glass. And then we have one for our wine as well. Yeah, we'll go ahead and trade with them for the glass. And then with the, the wine here, we'll trade with these guys. All right, excellent. So that'll help bring in that money a little bit quicker. We do have two characters that are a bit disloyal but not a problem just yet nothing we have to worry about and i think we're gonna wait till we get into 470 here we do have an event that we're gonna look at and then we're gonna go and end the episode so the event is prosperity under the guidance of appius uh rum has gone from strength to from strength to strength, some of our advisors are recommending the institution of a new tax in order that the national treasury might share in this prosperous era so we can say taxes sure nobody will notice uh, appius will lose a bit of popularity it doesn't really affect us at all doing that and then we get a national tax bonus for 60 months uh it's gonna be super helpful while getting the good nature trait i don't know how that would be helpful so yeah i think we're just going to can you not see the the trait when you hover over it that's that's unfortunate they should show you the trait and what you get from it but anyways we're gonna go with this one and i'll increase our income by quite a bit all right, so making good money, guys. Uh, we're still in the negative, so we got we got to get out of that. Uh, you know, for that event, pay for that event. Continue drilling these troops. Uh, as far as our aggressive expansion, we didn't burn off that much because we didn't really make that much progress. I've been talking about all, all this, all these different mechanics in this episode, so we didn't make as much progress as you'd think for a peaceful episode. So we do have to uh, burn off a lot of aggressive expansion. Still, manpower could go a lot higher, and so we that we'll be able to uh, get that higher as we wait for aggressive expansion to burn down. And that's what we'll focus on for right now, guys, is just uh, getting that AE a bit down. Uh, and, you know, we did integrate these two countries, so we got something done. Uh, and the next war will likely be against these guys here. I remember they are allies. Uh, so just attacking one, although maybe they broke their alliance. Yeah, uh, they're in a defensive league now. Oh, okay. So it looks like one war... We'll take care of all four of these countries here. All four of them. 
So that's good news. It means one conflict, get them all annexed, and then we can focus on moving down here and into Sicily. Uh, so hopefully we should be able to do that next episode if we can get enough aggressive expansion burned off. Remember, we were sitting at like 30-something, so we were pretty high because we annexed all the Etruscans, and that uh, did have a cost to it. We also need to look at our our uh, governors in this area and, and see what he's doing. Um, yeah, he's doing local autonomy, so we really need to start converting them. So I think we're going to work on cultural assimilation and just take the, the penalty for doing that, for switching that up. I think that's probably for the best here. That's all for this area. This is a, a different commander here, a different governor, excuse me. And we did change him to cultural assimilation. Okay, I see. All right, well, we needed him doing that as well. Uh, and let's see, we're still doing cultural assimilation down here too. All right, excellent. So just getting more Romans uh, throughout this region. All right, so we're going to go ahead and end the episode here. Hope you guys did enjoy it. I know it was a, a little bit heavy on the... Uh, I guess the tutorial aspect uh, about with the legions and, and the map modes and, and other things. So we're a little bit heavy on that one. I do know that we do have a lot of uh, people who are new to the game and, and don't have any experience. And, and some of them don't even play Paradox games, so they don't even have that advantage. So just trying to impart the, the limited knowledge I have from the, you know, again, it's my my experience with the game is, is not uh, nowhere near the level of, of my experience with you know, E4, or Hoi4, or CK3 even. Uh, so I, I have like 50-something hours in the game. So I'm not an expert in the game or anything, but I know there's a lot of people coming to it who, who have no clue how anything works, and they've been finding this series very helpful for uh, you know figuring out how to play the game and how different mechanics work. And so I'm trying to make sure that we keep that in the series and, and explain things. And rather than doing big old info dumps every episode where it's like, oh, I'll cover everything in one video, I'm just trying to cover a couple mechanics in every video. So in this one, we focused more on the legions and stuff. And we were just overall taking care of a lot of stuff, too. There's a lot of things we needed to deal with this episode after all that uh, annexations we've done recently. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy the episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you guys on the next episode, and thanks for watching.